Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing really, really well. For anyone who is new here, welcome. It is lovely to have you. My name is Heather. I am a professional freelance viola player, living and working primarily in the UK. And I make videos all about kind of freelance life and musician life and the things I've kind of picked up and observed along the way. Today is a part two of the what is in my bag kind of thing. I was going to do them all in one video but then I was like oh that's gonna be really really long and to be honest like I know you guys, you guys are nosy, you're like me, it's fine but is anybody really that nosy? I don't know. So I've done it in a part two because last week I talked about basically what was in my like handbag kind of bag and then this week it's going to be a uh, what's in my case. So obviously this is going to be a little bit more actually nuts and bolts of what do I need to do my job day to day but I will link the video that I did last week up here so you can go and check that out if you would like. Also I've just realised that it's this side not this side. It's going to be linked. It's, it's linked up here. Go click on that if you want to, but watch it after this video because, you know, don't go anywhere. So, for the case itself, I have a good old classic BAM case. And this video is not sponsored by BAM, but BAM, if you, if you want to get involved, if you want to collab, you follow me on Instagram, so I know you're watching this. And I have to say, it's, it's great. It does the job. The only thing I would say about this oblong one that I've got, I will, I will link it below so you can check it out, is that it is quite heavy. And so I am looking to get a lighter, probably shaped case that will just be a little bit more travel friendly. But at the moment, this is great. It does what I need it to do. And I also really like it because this is reflective. I don't know if you can, you can probably pick that up a little bit in the light. But so if you are, you know, walking and it's dark or whatever, then this will reflect, which is just kind of cool. So first up, we have the two most important things in this entire case. And that includes my viola. These little guys, they're just, uh, I mean, this, if this isn't an insight into my brain, I, I don't know what is. But this this little guy here is called Forget Me Not, and it is, I mean, I don't even know what this is meant to be, to be honest. But this was actually given to me by my first ever violin teacher, and uh, yeah, it has been in my case now for, oh gosh, how long have I been learning to play? Probably about 22, 23 years this has been with me. So yeah, she comes everywhere with me, and it just, um, it, you know, it makes me smile every time I open my case. The other little mascot I have is this, and it is, um, it is a little, it's a bumblebee, and my sister made me this, and again, it just, oh, it just makes me smile. I love bumblebees. I think they're just, they're adorable. I mean, they're like, how do they fly? Does, like, do we actually know how they fly? Because they're ridiculous. Anyway, but they're just, it's just cute, and it's funny, and it's in my case, so. Cleaning cloth. So this is just a little, kind of microfiber cloth and I use this just to wipe down my viola after every time I play it. Sweat off your hands because you know we all we all sweat it's gross but here we are. Resin, general dust and grime all eats away at the varnish of your instrument so it is you can't you can't not have one of these and you need to be wiping down your instrument after every single time you use it. Every single time. I would uh I once got told off when I went for a lesson with the principal of an orchestra that I was very much hoping to get extra work with um, and I've since worked with them so you know it's fine but I got my viola out of my case and he was like oh you don't you don't like your instrument then <laughs> and I was like what what it was covered in rosin and it was it was embarrassing and honestly ever since that day never not clean it Ever. The next thing I have in here is just this, it's kind of a little gross now, but it's this silk scarf. It's just like a head scarf. It's pure silk, so it keeps my viola nice and dry, but it just sort of protects it, helps it slip into the case a little bit easier. I mean, this thing's worth a lot of money, so yes, I wrap it in silk. So next, obviously, we have the minor maker itself, my viola. So I play on a Voigt and Sons instrument, which is a German maker, but he actually made this one whilst he was in London, which is really, really cool. And yeah, I mean, I love it. This was actually my 21st birthday present from my parents, which was an incredibly generous gift. And I don't think I really 
appreciated it <laughs> at the time. Obviously it was very exciting getting to pick my own instrument and all this kind of stuff, but yeah. Thank you, Mum and Dad. This is still amazing. I'm not entirely sure if it's the instrument that will carry me throughout my entire career. It's it's quite big for me, really. For those of you that don't know, violas are done in inches. So this is a 16 inch. So I think I'm starting to kind of keep my ears and eyes out for a slightly smaller instrument. But I love it. And obviously, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's my viola. Next I have my shoulder rest and I play on a pedi. I've always said pedi because it's like pedicure. But I mean obviously it's, it's not but let's get, it's called pedi anyway. And it's a carbon fiber one. I really love this one because it's really really light. Like I said my viola is quite a big one for me so I wanted to keep the weight down as much as I could in the other stuff attached to it. And also if you have ever had problems with your shoulder rest constantly like falling off this has never, hand on heart, never fallen off during a rehearsal, concert, recital, anything. And I actually did a patch of work a few, uh, oh gosh, well, I mean, it was before lockdown, obviously. And my desk partner had the same one. And she said exactly the same thing. She said that she never has any problems with this falling off. So yeah, highly, highly recommend this one. It's quite pricey, but it's, it's worth it, in my opinion. Then we have my viola, but I don't know if I can actually get this, there we go, I don't know if I can get this entirely in shot, but I play on a Brazilian bow, which I really, really love, and it's made by Cavallo, so yeah, I really, really love this, this is actually, in the grand scheme of bows, <laughs> this was not actually very expensive, so I, but I really, really love it, I tried out some quite pricey bows when I was picking it out, and yeah, this was my favourite because I got this at the same time as I got my new viola so it was a few years ago now but my mum said she was like you went top of the budget for your viola and you went bottom of the budget for your bow so that's okay <laughs> I was like you're welcome it's a really good all-rounder for me and one of the things I really love about it because you know I'm, I'm like this is the mother of pearl and the frog here has like a pink shift to it and I always say like if anybody stole my bow I'm like I'd be able to tell because I have never seen that like bright of a pink in the frog before so yeah I don't know it's just a nice little individuality about it I guess so yeah it's my bow. Most cases will have like a little pouch that you can take out um I love this because it means I can just kind of grab it and take it um into rehearsals if I want to but in here just kind of have, I mean, there used to be a lot of rubbish in here and I have actually quite recently cleared it out because, you know, I got bored in lockdown. But first things first, I have my earplugs. Now, I cannot stress this enough. If you are somebody who plays in orchestras a lot, be it professional, amateur, whatever, get yourself some good earplugs. They are the one of the best investments you can make in just looking after yourself because you need your hearing <laughs> to do your job and it is quite frightening if you look up results of people who have been playing in orchestras for you know years and years and years and haven't been wearing earplugs like the damage to their hearing is is extreme and especially if you are a viola player or a cellist we are very close to the brass section <laughs> and don't get me wrong some of my best friends in this world are brass players and I love you guys, you know that, but they're loud. They're really, really loud. I have got some Minerva earplugs and they are these ones which are molded to your ears. So I had to sit with like blue goop in my ears for a little while. That was, that was not particularly pleasant, but because they're molded, they work so much better. Obviously these are an investment, but they're, you know, my ears aren't gonna change shape. So I've got these for the rest of my life and yeah, get some earplugs, it's important. Next up in here, I have a little sewing kit. And this one I just got from a camping shop. And this has just been oh, a little savior over the years. I can think of at least three occasions where I have sewed somebody into their concert dress just before going on stage because their zipper's busted or they've got like a rip in it and they didn't notice. I even once had to stitch the soloist into her dress. Her manager came running into the green room and was like, does anybody have a sewing kit? Because her dress had broken and she didn't have a spare with her. And I was like, yes, I do. So I was <laughs> 
stitching this like international sodomist who obviously I, I won't name but into her dress like minutes before we went on stage so that was quite fun she bought me a drink afterwards it was kind of a nice moment but anyway have a sewing kit on you because you never know this next one is is a little bit tragic because uh it's my rosin um and i have the perestro gold flex rosin which is i mean it's kind of fancy because it's got gold flex in it but do you need those i don't think so um but clearly i uh <laughs> i need a new one uh this is slightly embarrassing i'm slightly ashamed of this but if anybody has any good recommendations for rosin um i'm all ears because i'm not particularly fussed about getting this one again i mean it was good but mm, i don't know i i to be honest i don't really know how much of a difference rosin makes somebody will probably yell at me for that but anyway have any suggestions let me know because clearly i'm in the market obviously pencils and rubber get yourself like a decent like big rubber which you can actually rub out a lot with these little ones on the end often don't work often smudge and i mean you'll be there for hours so yeah pencils rubber can't do a rehearsal without them i also have a little pot of varnish cleaner even if you wipe down your instrument every time you play it there's always going to be a little bit of gunk and a bit of build up um and this was one that was recommended to me by the luthier that normally looks after my instrument but obviously i can take it to him during the last few months so yeah he recommended this one i'll link it down below and then lastly just some some peg paste again this one's in a little tin which um i've lost so yeah this is just for if any of my pegs are slipping or if they're getting really stuck then you just kind of take out rub a bit of this on you don't want to be in a situation where you can't like you can't tune auditions before a concert like your pegs need to be in good working order so yeah this has been uh, really useful but no tin because i lost it then in the back pocket my in-ears so these are for when you are doing gigs that have lots of electronic stuff going on and whatever just in-ears they plug into your little pack and then you can actually hear what's going on which is very handy i use the sure ones i'll have everything linked below because i think it can be really useful to know what other people use for this kind of stuff they're just their basic model but i've actually found these to be really really good in regards to the quality and everything these are great practice mute these are so useful particularly if you travel a lot for work and you're staying in airbnbs and you want to be able to practice but you don't want to really annoy your hosts so yeah i find this really really handy next up is something that i'm <laughs> pretty sure is probably older than me we've we've definitely had it for years and years as long as i can remember and it's this tuner it's so it's so bulky and i i need to get a slimmer lighter one but to be honest it's kind of nostalgic for me because we have literally had this for as long as i can remember there's like little dents in all the buttons because it's been used so much a tuner Sorry, you did not need the backstory, but do you know? In here, I have all of my spare strings. So my favorite strings at the moment are the Eva Parazzi Golds, which look like this. They're shiny and they're pretty, I like it. My viola has a tendency to be quite bright and almost, dare I say it, a little bit violin-y sounding. And I just find that these really help bring out the more kind of mellow side of it, which has been wonderful. I find them really responsive. They last a really long time. And yeah, really, really love. They're not cheap. <laughs> They're about £100 for a set, but very, very much worth the money in my opinion. And then lastly, I promise these are the last things. I didn't quite realise how much stuff I had in this case, actually. But I do genuinely use everything on a daily basis and every gig i go to so here we are music the music that i am using at, the, at any particular time be it if i have an audition coming up but the things that are always in here pretty much without fail are my Kreutzer studies because i just find these a really really great way to warm up and yeah a bit of technical work in there this has been a fairly new edition um and it's warming up by simon fisher and i had this recommended to me by a principal of a section that i went and played to and it's actually a violin book technically but possible to transfer everything from it onto the viola pretty much so it's really really good but it's just it's literally just like warm-up exercises and <laughs> they're really hard 
well, they're not hard I just I need to practice them and get better but I find this really really helpful just to give a bit of structure to my warm-ups and also it's just that real like technical fine-tuning and I've been really enjoying it so yeah then I have my excerpts at the moment the next audition I have coming up is hopefully an LSO one when they reschedule everything so I have all my excerpts for that never go anywhere without this bad boy uh, playing through Bach is something which I try to do in in pretty much every practice session it's it's just such a pure form of music and I really enjoy it and sometimes when I just want to de-stress then I will just play through some Bach which is sad and geeky but true and then we have the concertos <laughs> any auditioning player at the moment will will feel the pain of just constantly having your concertos on you at all times because they are they will never be good enough ever which is just you know sad but true so i always have my hofmeister and my walton my walton is just falling apart i actually have to um there's a little corner missing which i just have to remember every time which to be fair i mean i basically have this memorized anyway but yes it has been well used well loved might be a stretch but there we go that is everything in my viola case sorry there was there was a lot there and this video was longer than i intended it to be but i hope that you really really enjoyed that little insight into what a professional player has in their in their case really and in their kit so yeah i really really hope you enjoyed it if you would like to see more videos from me then please do subscribe and obviously like this video comment below with your rosin suggestions i because i really really need some new ones and yeah i will see you guys in the next video have a really really good week bye guys hello everyone is this lighting better i feel like it might be do i need to refilm the last video Definitely should have ironed this before I started filming. I'm very, very sorry.